Okay, so who's St. Benedict? I mean, not a lot of people know about him. I don't know much about him myself. I mean, what do you know, Ricky? Not a damn thing. See, that's what I mean. So today we're going to talk about St. Benedict and what else? And monasticism. There you go. And what's the basic idea of monasticism? I mean, what do you, what, what do you say there, Ricky? Basically sitting alone doing nothing and being a monk. It's pretty close, and St. Benedict was a monk. I mean, he's the one that sort of kick-started the whole thing. Thanks that. I'm almost set off an alarm. Now, with that, we're going to go into a section here, okay? okay so, Ricky, what's this guy? Who's St. Benedict? St. Benedict was born in 480 AD in Rome, and he was, he was loaded. He had a very wealthy family. He was going to inherit a lot of money. But he didn't want that. No, no, no. When he got older, he fled Rome to protect his virginity from all the thoughts, and he joined the Thought Patrol. Just kidding. Ooh. Uh, yeah, is, is, that, is this accurate? Give or take. Give or take? Okay, like, uh, how? Okay. When he got older, he fled Rome to protect his virginity because he got sick of all the corruption, the sin, and he became a hermit. Wait, who, who taught him all this? I mean, wh when was this in his life? Uh, about college age. About oh. college age. Basically, like, in the prime age of... The, the prime age of what? Prime age of, uh... Discovering okay. the, the human, <laughs> the female body. Oh, okay. So he discovered that he didn't like women too much? Nope. So, so but could he could he be possibly uh, part of the L LGBT community? We're not gonna... We're, we're, not, gonna, we're not gonna go there? We're not gonna reveal that information. Oh, okay. And then what happened to our boy Benedict? Uh, well, what after that, he fled to the mountains and became a hermit. I mean, he didn't do much. He just sort of like went on this super duper like weird like crazy like kale diet from what I understand he just he, he spent in the mountains he just was alone he was solitude he just wanted to be alone from all the thoughts I mm. mean he, he's kind of a simple guy but later God's like yo get off your ass and let's actually do something so after that he, he sort of went over and he like saw some stuff and like this one dude this dude like in a big black hoodie and like he's just over there's like hey hey I got a woman you, you, you wanna you wanna you want to go for that? Like, uh, he's like, oh no, nah, man, I I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. He's like, nah, man, you, I think, I think you really like her. Like, nah, nah, I'm not about that life. So after that, he like tried to run away, he tried to get away from her. Who is this hooded guy? This hooded guy. Oh, he's the devil. He's, he's, he's a devil, man. Just complete ass of a guy. But after that, he sort of went around, and he tried to get away from this girl, right? So he rolled into a thorn bush. I mean, what kind of guy? Is that dedicated to get away from like some thought like that? I mean, he, he rolled into a thorn bush. That must have hurt. I mean, I don't, I don't understand the logic behind that, but so Ricky just told me it purified his wounds. I mean, I guess that. I, I, can you explain that to me, Ricky? Uh, basically, his bodily wounds purified his soul. In other words, another excuse to be a virgin. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So what did this do to his image? Uh, this made him seem like a great role model to other monks. This made him seem very grand. And other monks sought him out for advice and they wanted to be they wanted him to be their leader. Now, with all this being said, he warned them that he would be very strict. How he can't be that strict? He's, he's oh yeah. He's been living in the woods or the mountains for like oh, yeah. years. Oh yeah, no, no masturbation, no impure thoughts. What? No impure thoughts. What? I, I can't even think. No? I can't even like have a no, thought. No, God sees everything. There's nothing to see up there. There's not much going on up here, man. Good point. <laughs> Anyways, with all that being said, they still try to poison him. The monks still try to poison him. And they served him a cup with some poison and some other drink. Oh man, that's wine. backstabbing. Man. That is not right. Now, what Benedict did was he pulled one of these and the cup just shattered into a million pieces. God! Yeah. Man, was God watching his back that whole time? Yeah, right, God's Mark. got it. So what happened after he caught all these fake brothers? Well, he's like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna... Snap, snap, snap. He cut all the ties with them. He's just like, bye-bye. So he just got all the real guys, you know, all the, the real dudes. He got his boys together. And after that, he sort of got them all together and he's like, yo, let's, let's start a monastery together. And he started not just one, but a dozen. That's 12 for some of you that don't know that. I know, I, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you through the camera. I know you're in there. 
and what else was that? What else did he do with that, Ricky? Well, over time, he established one in Monte Cassino, and that was the real one, the big one. Like, so he got like all these people together, right? He's like, yo, let's get every single one of y'all, and let's just live in one spot. One spot. And at, I mean, what was the purpose of this? What was the mindset behind this? The mindset behind this was to unify all the monks into one community. And what did that lead to today? I mean, from what I understand, that that started how we do things today, right? I mean, we have... Oh, yeah. This was the foundation for all monasteries. I mean, look, look at, like, the, the far end at Central. I mean, that whole part of the building just for the brothers, right? Mm-hmm. Not too, not too different from that. And now from that, we're going to go to our next subject, which is... Monasticism. There you go. We already talked about Benedict and what he did and how he contributed to monasticism and Christianity. But what the heck is monasticism? I mean, Good question. elaborate. Good question. So monasticism started after the age of martyrdom. Now, this age of martyrdom happened as Christians were being persecuted, right? Yeah. And the highest form of sacrifice for your faith was to die for your faith. But after the end of the persecutions, they could do that anymore. Yeah, it wasn't really too popular Yeah, anymore. basically no more suicidal Christians, right? Well, they wouldn't call it that. <laughs> Same thing. Okay, uh, we're going off on a tangent there. Anyways, so after this, monasticism was invented. And this was now the form to sacrifice instead of martyrdom. Because this is essentially also sacrificing your life for your faith. Now, this was... Uh, to abstain from all worldly pleasures and to live a life dedicated to prayer and work and your community and God and to discovering more about God, discovering more about yourself and to be what pure. What did Benedict want to get out of monasticism? I mean, what, what was that about? Good question. As it says right here in the book, Benedict envisioned a family working and praying together, all sacrificing themselves for the common good, a self-contained social unit. So, what that is basically is he wanted all the monks to work together, almost like a family, to do everything together. Work, pray, all of these things. And it's basically what any Catholic, any Catholic brotherhood should want. That, that's really deep. I mean, where do we see that today? Their works? Um, well, yeah. we see their works everywhere, really. They contributed largely to architecture and agriculture. And actually, Gregor Mendel, the father of genetics, so they call him, he was a monk. Really? So now. they contributed very largely to science also. All right, Park. So, how did monasticism contribute to Western culture? Shoot, man. I mean, without monasticism, half of us wouldn't even be here. I mean, you, I, we wouldn't have met. I probably. If, if those that were here, if they were, It'd be so different. Life would be so different without monasticism. I mean, that set up culture as it is today from art to science, like you said before with Mendel. I mean, it is, it's so fundamental to how we act today. I mean, without that, without that, life would be so different. That set up to what we deem correct and what, how we treat each other and how we, how we even like our, just from like the way we dress to the art we like and the music we listen to. It is all stemmed off that. That is the biggest part of the Western society today, monasticism. I mean, there's nothing more important than that. I want to say thank you for watching. This is a film by Park and Ricardo. And th that's the end.